Hi, I'm Cesar De La Cruz, co-host of the Tulsa Mac Podcast. Today, I'm here with the legendary Mr. Bill Myers. I get to spend quite a uh, quite a lot of time with Mr. Bill in the summer times and uh, traveling through. He's got a, a beautiful place. I got a few videos and a few pictures of the ranch. Uh, you'll get to see a few few shots. But uh, Mr. Bill, how's everything going today? It's going good. Let's. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about your horses and uh, some of my favorite ones. You know, we can talk about Frenchman's Guy to start off with, but uh, uh, tell us a little little story about that. Yeah, Frenchman's Guy. He's he's kind of the, the horse that made our made our business and and uh, kind of the foundation horse that made our whole program. So been a been a great great sire for us and and uh, sired so many good colts. A lot of different areas. Just a just a great, great horse. Big blessing to have had him, you know. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and then, what, what, he was he was pretty good at. Uh, they run barrels on him pretty good, right, Miss Deb? Yeah, my uh, wife run barrels on him. She did real good. And yep. She made the finals of several associations, and they didn't keep track of the money back then too much, so didn't really, you know, didn't really have a lot of that tabulated, but. She she was pretty dominant in this North North Country on him. What about uh, so did you get to rope on him very much? Yeah, we roped on him a little bit, maybe a little later on in his career, you know, because he was he was a real good barrel horse. So naturally, that was his first calling. But then later on, we roped on him, and he was a he was a really cool rope horse. But just kind of didn't, didn't do it till we just kind of done run barrels on him. Well. Uh, you, you had you had a stud, a late stud pass away. A Frenchman's guy's no longer with us as well, but uh, smooth guy, really talented stud. I got a filly that we uh, we we bred smooth guy too, and we got a product over in this uh, in this pen over here. Really nice filly. I, I love her personality, and it's it's funny to see how that horse. He, he must have been just a, a just mentally a really nice horse. Yeah, you know he was a really really super good made horse. Beautiful horse. You couldn't hardly take a picture of him that wasn't gorgeous. He just he just was so correct and just had a lot of class about him. And he would end up being a you know really great sire for no you know he died when he was like eleven or twelve and uh, he's got four million dollars worth of earners and hadn't even been here for about five years. So I think he had a chance of being as good or maybe better than his dad if he didn't you know lived. Well, nowadays it's it's funny how uh, we're getting into the you know the barrel horses. Uh, the barrel races really took took a hold of the the Frenchman's guys' horses because they can really run. They got a good mind on them. Yep. Uh, and uh, the smooth guys and all that stuff. But uh, seems like the ropers are getting getting smart to it and figuring out that they make really good head horses, especially you know being able yeah. to, to sit still in the box and and be able to run. And uh, you know w we can talk about. Uh, Mr. Sassy Frenchman, I've got to ride him a little bit too, right? And mm -hmm. you have another stallion out there in the barn too. Yeah, special kind of guy. Special yeah. kind of guy. Yeah. The, those kind of horses uh, are some of the fastest head horses I've, I've ever rode, but they rate as well. Um, and they, they sit there and score in the box. They're not, they're not thinking about running through your hand. They're, they're, when you ask them to go, they go. Yeah. So the the what you what you done with the team roper game? I feel you've changed that that game as well. It started with the barrel race and it's kind of moving on to the team roping, and uh, it's it's kind of fun for you because you're getting to compete. We've actually got to place at a few of these these futurities as well on, on your own stock, and I got a little a little mare I told you about that I'm gonna start helping helping you on. So yeah, that'll be that'll be cool. Hopefully, we get a couple checks on horses you raised and everything. But uh, tell us about how the science of that how. When I spend time with you, you're all, you're talking about shoulders and withers and how how the, the the neck ties into the shoulders and how the the hip you know has got to come underneath them a little bit. You can breed a, a stallion that's got a certain conformation and then put them on a mare with certain conformation to get a quality product. Right. And uh, how did that all start with you? I know because because Mr. Bill, you're like a uh, a rocket scientist when it comes to to, to the horse stuff and the, the the bloodlines and stuff. You know how to how to cross them real well. So tell me just a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, I don't know about rocket scientists, but <laughs> <laughs> it's it's been fun. I mean, you you got it. Uh, we've always believed in in trying to breed a cow bred, partially cow bred horse to a to a race bred mare or vice versa, because the rodeo world you need a fast a horse that runs quick fast. But yet he's still got a rate, drop his below hawk, mm -hmm. drop his butt, and handle 
handle stuff and then also be mentally strong so you can handle that pressure day in and day out. Right. So that's what we've tried to do from beginning of our program to, to now. And now that the rope horse world is evolving, it's a kind of a new frontier that everybody's trying to to, to, to work on. And it's a, it's a you know, it, it really ain't any different than, you know, our horses went towards the barrel racing world, but they could have just as well have been been just a famous way a long time ago in the rope horse world as they are now right. in the barrel racing. But it's not, I mean, we've, they talk, some of these guys talk about, you know, this new, new crosses, but heck, we've been doing that for 40 years. Right. So it's not something that's new to us. We've been doing it and having very good success with th that type of deal, breeding a cow bred, partially cow bred horse to a partially race bred horse. And then, you know, getting your size you want, getting that bone, getting that, you know, I'm a stickler on confirmation because confirmation allows the horse to move a certain way and do a job a certain way that, you know, you want in the rodeo arena, which, uh, you know, they, they gotta be quick, they gotta be fast, but then they also gotta be able to control that speed. Right. And so your, your breeding plays into that horse doing that. that. Right, because uh, I know people are trying to, you can, I've, I've rode horses that are, you know, Cutting bred horse and they're almost too hot on the yeah, cow. Yeah, yeah. And then you can, I've, I've rode some horses that are kind of more running bred, and they just, that's all they want to do is yeah, run. Yeah. So you've done a great job right there making that cross to to help us ropers out a lot. I know the healers, seems like the head, uh, heel horses are getting a little bit bigger and stronger and faster uh, just to be able to kind of keep up with the head horse and the head yeah. loop. And I know a lot of your horses are crossing really nice with even the heel horse as well. They got a little more size to them. And, yeah. And can stride out a little bit longer when we need them to. Which yeah, is pretty important, I feel. Yeah, you know, the keel horse deal, you know, I think what's super important there too is that deep cinch, you know, that heart girth where they can take that jerk and ha handle it day in and day out, and low hawks where they can get that butt under them easy, not they don't have to work at getting it, you know, getting right. it under them. And so, you know, you, you got to breed that way, and then withers will be up a little bit to where, you know, your saddle horn stays up mm -hmm. and they get under the butt, you know, they don't, they don't, you don't want them. I don't want them low in the front end. I want them right. a little bit, just a little bit of elevation in that front end. And so you're breeding, that all goes back to your breeding again. You know, if you start out trying to get that Whoa. with the, with your two sets of genetics that you're breeding together, a lot of the time, I mean, you get, you get some consistency in it. Right. And uh, you've, you've recently kind of uh, bought a cow horse that you're going to maybe cross with some of your running mares. Uh, he, he goes by the name of CR Duel, uh, CR Tough Duel, sorry. Yep. He's a really cool looking flax and mane and tail saw horse. Got a lot of, uh, got a lot of chrome on his face there. Really, really cool looking horse. Really cool moving looking horse, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, do, you, do you have a few mares you're thinking about kind of crossing on him right away and kind of what are your thoughts on that? Definitely, we're really excited about that horse because he's he's a he's a he's just like you said he's a great moving horse. He's got a little size to him, but still got them low hawks. Wants to stop, and really good minded. And I think he's going to be a neat uh, new set of genetics to cross over into our. We know most of our horses got quite a little bit, quite a bit of run in them. And I think them two combinations, and maybe maybe bring our size down just a little bit because. We're getting, we're, our program was getting, some of our horses were getting a tad bigger than, than I like. And so I wanted to bring it down a little bit, get more of a medium sized horse, quicker footed horse, not really say quicker footed, we already kind of got that, but but just not such a big horse that more that can do either one, basically. Yeah. yeah. If it's the right size you could head or heel on. If you're going to be moving in the, the calf roping game for Yeah, and even, yeah. And even <laughs> not, you know, whatever. He, when they could score yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they, they're, They've had good success in the bulldogging because they're so dang fast, yeah, you know, yeah. and fast right now, you know, not not down the arena. But. It's funny how you kind of tr went from from the kind of the barrel races, kind of started getting them a lot, and then the bulldoggers and the team ropers. Like I said, it's it's funny you're going to be be getting the calf ropers before too long. With with the, I think it's important to have a horse that that can run like that, but yeah. no, there's a cow in the arena. Yeah, they just can't be running out there blind. They got to know what's what's yeah. going on. They got to go find them, and then they and then they got to have grit, you know, right. grit to get down and get back, yeah. and, you know, do that stuff. that's hard, you know, it's pretty hard, pretty hard maneuvers some of that stuff, and and you know they got to be good minded, you know, be able to handle that that pressure, and it, it's uh it's another another aspect of the deal. It's 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 you know every part of it's getting tougher all the time. I mean, right. we're looking at faster times all the time and you know so the, the better the horses get 
the more more you, you know these guys are roping so dang good that you know the only thing that could change much now is probably how how good a horses are riding right and uh <laughs> so we've talked a little bit about like the rodeo game and stuff we're over here at uh your your youngest son billy myers he's he's started the the platinum metal fraternity mm -hmm. and that's where we're at right now and uh it's pretty awesome. This, this fraternity set up. We had the calf open yesterday. We had uh, the head today. The open uh, the six and under class today, and the and the, and the head. You had a horse by the name of Guy's Magic that that placed today. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah. He's a he's a Frenchman's guy son out of a actually a half sister to a smooth guy. Out of a, the mother is a, out of daughter old hot colors, which was a great race horse that we had in our program for a lot of years. But then he's out of a dry, that mare was out of a daughter at dry dock, which was the mother of smooth guy. Yeah. And so it's really exactly what we're trying to do with everything. And he's just a great individual. Uh, I, I could feel it in him when we first started riding him. And I, I wasn't wrong. He, he's got that greatness about him that, you know, he's got all the stuff you want. You know, he's, he's strong down through his middle. His hawks are really low. He's very, very fast. He's good minded. He's... He's what, you know, to me, the ultimate head horse right. that, you you know, you're trying to raise. That that horse is, is a neat, neat horse, and we're, we're, we're excited about him. Dakota's done a great job training him and riding him, and uh, we're looking forward to hopefully winning more on him as we go along. Let's talk about that a little bit, Mr. Bill. You've, uh, you, you, you got to deal in the racehorse game when you were a younger man, and this is kind of similar. You got a jockey out here, and... Uh, it, it, it helps to have one that you really get along with and you can kind of talk to freely yeah. and kind of kind of be open about with some stuff. Yeah. And uh, you, you've had Dakota Kirchis Lager ride some of your head horse the last few years. Yep. Uh, talk to us about your jockey a little bit. Okay. Yeah, you know, Dakota's, Dakota's all, first of all, he's a super hard worker. And uh, so that's a, that's a big part of anybody's success. You, you work hard. But then he's got a lot of feel for a horse. He, 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 he's got a lot of timing with a horse. Yep. He feels the little things that need to be done to him on a daily basis or at the shows, either one. I mean, he's just a, he's, he's a phenomenal guy as far as his job that he does and the stuff he accomplishes and with them horses. I mean, I, I, and he's a great guy, a good friend of ours besides, you know, a business associate. He's a good friend of our families. And so we, we've enjoyed the friendship and the, and the business side of the deal with him. And it's, it's just been fun. I've get along with him real well too, Mr. Bill. He kind of helped me get out in this this game a little bit and show me some stuff. I I made the finals, you know, rodeoing and stuff. But it, it's funny how uh, you got I got into this horse show game and it, it, I realized how how much horsemanship I needed to learn. And through his whole career, he's had some of the, the most world class uh, horsemen, you know, helping him out with this his roping and his riding. You can go to do. Sean Darnell and and uh, you know he worked with Rand Adams, so that's why I met him at the Rand Adams place and kind of hung out with him there for a little while. Yeah, that's for sure. He must have been 16 years old when when that when he was doing that. But exactly, you're right. I remember out there when uh, he was he was still 16, 17 years old, but he'd be out. He's one of the first ones out there in the morning, yeah. getting horses saddled up, getting them ready. Extremely hard worker. Yeah. I mean, extremely. So that's kind of like we talked about. Uh, these shows are getting really competitive. Um, your, your, your stallion, CR Tough Duel, he's got a lot of flash to him. Mm -hmm. He's got a lot of presence, and that's very, very important when it comes to a judge event. Absolutely. The judges really like Dakota, you know, so I think that helps out a lot. They like the way he rides as well. So you try to match a, a quality horse with a quality jockey yeah. to try to get the high scores. That's yes, kind of the most important thing in these, these, these things because let's uh, be honest with you, Mr. Bill. This is competitive now. It's like getting to the rodeo side of it. Mm -hmm. It's getting real competitive. For the sure. Guys that are riding these number one horses are not. They're not rejects anymore. These, no. these horses are bred to be team roping horses, and 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 now we're trying to. There's enough of them out there that enough of these guys are getting on them. It's getting so competitive. Oh, it's, it's getting awesome to see. I think the rodeo game is going to really uh, have an impact from these shows. I think the seven, eight year olds once they're they 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 age out of these shows they're going to go to have a, a a really good future in the rodeo game just because they <clears throat> when they're four they put a lot of pressure on them and they they kind of seen everything by the time they're four years old it seems like well yeah and then you know they the other thing is they make them go work right, right. they don't just rope on them. right they make them go do it correctly and you do that a couple years in a row them horses get really they get really nice i mean there's yeah. going to be a market for them horses as 
as we go along <laughs> because they've brought, been brought along slow, they've been brought along correct, and the cream kind of rises to the top, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there never used to be that availability. We used to have to just go to the jackpots or go to the rodeos, and you knew you couldn't really take care of them horses like they do at these yeah. at these deals. They make, you know, like I said, they're rewarded for doing it right, not just doing it. I've kind of asked around and just kind of spent enough time with these horsemen, you know, the Trevor Brazils, the Miles Bakers, yourself, Dakotas, uh, Kurt Sloggers, and, and, and they, they put, they're asking a lot of, at these four-year-olds at these shows, but yep. in the practice pen, they're real laid back on them. They, they spend a lot of time scoring. They yep. spend a lot of time steer stopping, yep. you know, all the little things, but they break it down within the week, you know, it's going to be slowed down yeah. and, and keep their bones. And that way they, they don't kind of run any issues by the time they're, they go to sell them when they're yeah. 70 years old, you know. For sure. And I think now it, it, it pays. I've seen it uh, where these guys ride them their four, five, six-year-old year, and, and it makes them a really good horse. They can keep with the same same jockey, the same rider to them, them years. You really see a really quality type horse. Dakota's got a mare that you, you've had, uh, you sold to Neil Wanless. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, and... Tell us, uh, it, her name is... Uh, yes, I'm Sassy. Yes, yes, I'm Sassy. Yep. She's really neat. She's done really good. Kayla Drigger's been riding her a little bit here lately, too. And yep. I mean, it's, it's really neat to see your your, your, your stock kind of going even to the highest level. Guys are really thinking about maybe taking that horse to, to the rodeos next year. That yep. She'll be age out with these fraternities and maybe right. start a rodeo career, which right. would be exciting for you, I'm sure. Absolutely. So... Well, Mr. Bill, I've taken enough of your time. Thank you so much for visiting with us. Thank you, for Caesar. With, uh, thank you, everything, and thank you for letting the family come stay at the house. Yeah, enjoy it. Ranch. I got a few videos. We're gonna we'll post them and, and show everybody this this ranch. Such such a neat place. Well, well, this stuff's been been good for, for for building friendships. Like I said, with you guys and you and you know and Dakota and a lot of the guys now that I've you know be, got to know better because of this deal. And so that's that's really a that's one of the most important parts about it. Right. And you like these shows a little bit too, kind of, it's a community out here. Yeah, You know, sure. Dakota, he's got some help and <laughs> his father-in-law comes and hangs out. It's like a lot of fun. It's a, a big community. Yeah. That's, you yeah. know, Trevor and Miles, got, they got their families come yep. to these things too. Yep. It's, it's, a, it's a real big, big, big cool show. And Billy did a good production over here. So oh, yeah. you can be proud of little Bill for yeah. this one. You know, it's, it's kind of, absolutely kind of good to see. Yeah. He's done a wonderful job. Kind of got a little new, go new concept and, breaking them divisions down and and giving some people some chances to win money that maybe wouldn't have because of his divisions right i mean i really think he's done a lot of thinking and and i'm, I'm real proud of him. and he and I, he really likes it so i'm tickled that he's enjoying it and and yeah and building it and working on it. i think he's gonna gonna get it nothing but better you know as time goes along you talked about the division there's a platinum the gold and is it the silver plat platinum's a lot i think Plat it's a silver Gold and then black. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then like so it's like a it's like a three D barrel right yeah. for yeah. example, yeah. you know. So if you happen not to you know, if your horse maybe not don't score as high as maybe mm -hmm. the dark side yeah. or whatever right. right. whatever's right. right. really nice stallion, you know. Right. You 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 have a chance to, to yeah. place in the two D or the three D, which is nice. Which yeah. I think the, the the silver paid pretty dang good. I think it paid around four grand. Yeah, something like that. So, real good. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's a it's a neat concept and a neat deal. And like I'm I'm looking forward to, to seeing this uh, I, I, go to the future here. I think if it catches on, you're going to see more and more people want to get in and say, hey, we you know we got a chance instead of for sure having to be that very front end of the deal. We can still land in here with a with a respectable showing and win money. You know, yeah. we got, we got a little little filly, uh, guys, Desert Rose, and I was a little bit timid to show her this year. She's just a five year old, and there's no incentive for that. So I thought I'd give her one more year, but we'll be showing her next year. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to that. She's out of a, a heel horse I used to rodeo on back in the day. I named yeah. her, her name was Annie Oakley. She's a cute little mare and she's out of a, a, a smooth guy mm -hmm. so she's beautiful so i'm looking forward yeah. to showing her and wow. your your, okay. your colts have a lot of presence and I'm, i like i said i'm thankful for you thank you everything you, you taught me and kind of helped me out with as far as trying to be a horseman it's a uh, it's an ongoing journey i know that roping yeah, roping never. seems like your right arm is, is gonna only get yeah. you so far it's with your left hand yeah. and your legs are gonna you know being able to maneuver those horses that's the most important thing yeah so thank you so much for your time mr bill for from all uh, the guys at the Tulsa Mac podcast, we appreciate it. Thank you, yeah. Caesar. Thank you, Mr. All Bill. All right.